Colorado is now six spring practices in the eve of their first scrimmage. It's going to be open to the public, the media, and Folsom Field begins around 11.15 on Saturday. Looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to talk about some guys that were anxious to watch during that open scrimmage, but just wanted to start out with today in our interviews. Uh, I know you talked to Guy Thomas. What were your yeah. takeaways from that conversation? Yeah, you know, I was interested to talk with him because he obviously missed the last five games the last season with the foot injury. Um, and he was telling me that he was actually healthy by the end of the season. Um, sort of like a Nate Lama situation where we had heard that Nate could have probably come back for that Utah game, but they didn't want to push it. Guy Thomas was the same thing. He was healthy, but they didn't really want to. There was no need to bring him back for that last game. So he was healthy by then, but he's feeling great. And, uh, you know, he loves, uh, you know, working with uh, Coach Wilson and uh, is excited to, uh, I think what he said was, I'm excited to see uh, what the finished Guy Thomas looks like. That was his quote. So, um yeah, he he looks in great shape, and uh, I'm excited to see what he does. I mean, he, he feels he's like he's a leader. He just got an academic award this week too, so things are going well off the field for him as well. But I think he's a guy that uh, you know, he, I'm excited about him. I thought he played great in the first seven games last year. Yeah, I remember you and I ran into Coach Michaelowski, yeah. and we're talking about his guys, and he was talking about Guy Thomas and. and kind of talked about the fact that he's just a little bit different than some other guys in that room that yeah. just from a physicality a violence standpoint and yeah last year had he not gotten hurt I mean he was close to on par with Carson Wells yep. there for a while in terms of the plays he was making yeah he was making a ton of disruptive plays I mean he I thought he was one of the key players against A&M uh, when they almost pulled off that upset and he was playing great and um you know, I, I told him that today, and he, and he kind of smiled. He goes, yeah, he goes, I left a lot of plays on the field, though. So now that's kind of – and I think most guys would say that, right? Uh, the, the, it's kind of that perfectionist. But um, he wants to make more of those plays. He wants to kind of fill that role uh, that Carson had, maybe even do better and, like, have more production. I talked to a guy that Coach Durrell mentioned the other day, Justin Jackson, and uh, one of those veteran defense linemen that it, you were starting to kind of forget about because he hadn't been on the field a whole lot. And he, he talked about the fact that – He's putting in that effort that he needed to be putting in all along, and that's why he's making plays out there. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys see kind of the end coming, and it's like, okay, yeah. I really need to put it all together at this point. Mm -hmm. And the other guy I talked to today, Daniel Arias, is in that same boat, somebody that, hey, maybe CU fans wanted to write him off, but he's going to be a big part of this offense in yeah. 2022. He's got a wrap on a hand. He's not going to need surgery. So he's basically – playing with it one hand this spring but he said it's kind of good because it really gets him to focus because uh it's, it's harder to, to catch with one hand yeah. out there but he's always looked the part mm -hmm. and uh really introspective kid and he couldn't have said a nice th enough nice things about coach McGagan, his new receivers coach and just the the amount of detail that Phil McGagan puts into his craft, not just on the field out here, but getting to know these kids personally. Yeah, I think that's great. And, you know, Daniel's a, a kid that I've always enjoyed talking to. Uh, I think he's a really good kid and uh, one that, uh, I call him kid, but at this point he's like probably 23 years old, 24. But uh, he has always looked the part, and you love his potential. Uh, we know you and I have seen him uh, as one of the last guys to leave the field a lot of times when we get out here you know, working on the jugs machine and things like that. He, he puts a lot of time into it. Um, and I'd love to see him. I mean, he had he had a, a, his best year last year, and nobody had big numbers for the receivers. But uh, he had a, a good year last year, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does this year. And uh, you know, maybe, maybe McGagan takes that next step with him and makes him that better receiver. So tomorrow's scrimmage is one of two opportunities for us yeah. to see this team. The rest of the spring ball is all covered through interviews. It's human nature. We're going to overanalyze the crap out of this scrimmage. Right? Right. I mean, it just it, it is yeah. what it is. Yeah. Uh, that said, who are some of the guys you're going to be keying in on? We'll go back and forth. I think I've got five or six guys in mind, yeah. and uh, I'm sure we're going to double up a little bit. Yeah, you know, and I told you I'll think of it on the fly. I've got some guys in mind, but I'm going to start with R.J. Sneed, you know, because he's one that uh, as soon as he uh, committed here, I was excited about him because of what he did at Baylor. And the, just the things I've heard about him since he got here, guys have mentioned uh, that he's a leader. I've had a chance to, you know, to meet him. We haven't had a chance to interview him, but met him at the Blake Street Tavern, and one time I bumped him in the elevator. Uh, good size receiver, uh, you know, really well-spoken. You know, he comes from a good family uh, and just has that leadership quality that we've heard a lot about and super talented. So I'm excited to see, you know, what he looks like on the field in a Buff uniform. He was actually one of the guys I was going to mention as well. Just from, uh, he's going to be one of their top playmakers this year. Just to see what it looks like 
with RJ Snead in a CU uniform running around the field, and they're pretty thin at receiver. So yeah. some of those veteran guys, like a Brady Russell, you might not want to put out there for a lot of live reps, but with the lack of bodies there, they, they don't really have a choice but to right. you know, play a guy like that. What, what about Robert Barnes? You know, he came in, he, that's a guy I'm looking forward to seeing tomorrow. Uh, we were looking forward to seeing him last year more than we ended up seeing, but he started making more plays as the season went on, along. Mm-hmm. I think it was a, a tough adjustment for him just from a physicality standpoint, going yeah. from playing in space at Oklahoma to all of a sudden playing in a lot of traffic last year. Yeah. And that's a guy they really need to step up. I, I'm going to be kind of keying in on him and to see how physical he is, you know, with the blockers that are coming his way. Yeah, and, and he's a, he's one of those veteran guys too. That uh, I know he's been here you know a year longer than Snead, but he's kind of that veteran leader that came from a winning program, right? And uh, he's one that uh, you know when Mark, when his coach Mark Smith lost his home, you know, really put it out there and said, "Hey, I'm playing for you, coach. That's that's my why now." So um, at least when I've talked to him, that he's that's fueled him a lot, and he probably had some motivation before. I mean, that, these guys do, but. Um, um, that's kind of added to it, and so I, I, I'm excited to see what he does because we, we we were excited about that potential last year. Maybe didn't see it fully, but I think there's a lot more in him. Who else do you want to see tomorrow? You know, I, there's a bunch of guys we've talked to already, uh, talked to or heard about this spring. Uh, Eric Olson's one that yes. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. because the, those young tight ends. You know, Caleb Fourier kind of stood out last year, but Eric we didn't hear about a whole lot. We've heard a lot about him this spring, so I'm looking forward to seeing, okay, what does he look like? I mean, we hear he's catching a lot of passes. When I chatted with him the other day, he's huge. Uh, he He's uh, definitely the part. You know, it looks like he can almost play tackle here, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing him. Sticking on offense, Jake Wiley I'm anxious to see out mm-hmm. there. Kyle Devan really praised the type of effort that he's seen from Jake Wiley, both at, from a leadership standpoint and just from an improvement standpoint yeah. uh, since he got here. And again, it's just so easy to write these guys off when they have a bad season. But he was such a young guy. It was his first opportunity. How much better does he look out there? Uh, the quarterbacks aren't going to be live, but you yeah. know the, the pass rushers are. So yeah. is Jake Wiley going to keep that pocket clean? I can't wait to see that tomorrow. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does too. I mean, there's a few guys on the offensive line that I'm looking forward to, but Jake is one that um, – you know, people that know offensive line more than I do, they keep telling me there's a lot of talent there, but he just, you know, he needs uh, that good coaching. And last year was rough for him because you're thrown into left tackle. He wasn't supposed to be that last year. Yeah. And so, you know, he was kind of thrown into that. That's a tough spot for a senior, let alone, you know, kind of a 30 year freshman that's thrown in there. So I'm looking forward to seeing what his growth is like. What about Trevor Woods? This, fo- this program needs yeah. Trevor Woods to step up in a big way. I know they've got some guys transferring in here this summer, but. This is his opportunity out there with the first team defense to really, uh, you're not going to solidify a starting role in spring ball, but to really put himself on a path to, to be that for this football team. Yeah, he's a guy that uh, I've been excited about since he signed. I mean, just that playmaking ability, um, and he showed that last year. So I think they do need him, especially with Mark Perry moving on. Um, you got Isaiah Lewis there, but you need that second safety, and I think that he's the one, uh, to me, I look at and say that's the guy that needs to be that second safety. Any other guys? Yeah, you know, spe- sort of sticking with safety, but a guy that told me the other day he's more nickel right now is Tyron Taylor. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he does. Um, he made some, you know, good plays last year, but I'm just, I'm excited to see where he fits on this defense because he's telling me that he's playing all over the place. So um, if he's really in that nickel role, um, what does that look like for for the Buffs? And they need some guys to step up in that corner, uh, in the, just in that back end in general. But you know, how does he look in that defense? Yeah, and then, uh, you know, tight end as well, Austin Smith, a guy that not a lot of people are talking about, but yeah. Clay Patterson went out of his way to mention him. Yeah. Uh, you know, can he get vertical and maybe make a play to stretch the defense tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, it's gonna, there's going to be a lot of guys, like I said, we're definitely going to be overanalyzing this, and we'll get the spring game as well. But uh, any other thoughts leading into the scrimmage? It's just going to be nice to get out there. I know the fan base is a little bit ap- apathetic right now, but yeah. it's going to be beautiful weather out there. Uh, I, there's no place I'd rather be tomorrow. Yeah, you know, and uh, usually these things are, are pretty vanilla, but I am in general looking forward to seeing, you know, can we see any differences in this offense with Mike Sanford? And um, are there obvious things that we see like, okay, that we haven't seen that before? Um, and how much can you uh, base off of an open scrimmage in the spring? I don't know, but like you said, we're going to analyze the heck out of it anyway. So what does it look like? Does it look different because we've heard it's different? All right. Practice number seven is going to be an open scrimmage in Folsom Field. We'll be back after that with more analysis.